Hello everyone, hope you are well on this Wednesday night. Be ready, be ready at any moment. I'll go more into that here in a minute. But first, there's several things I want to cover real quick. We got a hurricane, uh, Idalia, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Idalia, uh, that is making a big impact right now as we speak. I'll go into that just a little bit. And then we've got uh, Mitch McConnell freezing up again. We've got news crews in Chicago being robbed. You can't make this stuff up, y'all. You really can't. And I have a passage that I'm going to share that I believe is one of the most encouraging, if not the most, one of the most encouraging passages in the whole Bible, at least it is to me. And uh, I will share that as well. Do stay tuned for that for sure. If you like this video, hit the like button. It helps us out. And if you haven't yet, do consider subscribing and hit the bell notifications. It does help us out, okay? And we appreciate it. First, where do I start? Hurricane. Hurricane uh, is, is hitting. It uh, impacted south, looks like northwest Florida the most, uh, around the panhandle, that northwest part of the panhandle. And it's really impacting Gainesville, Florida right now, at least now, Gainesville, Jacksonville, Tallahassee area. It's also, looks like it's going to really dump, if nothing else, dump a lot of water on Savannah, Georgia, that uh, southeast part of Georgia is getting hit. Now, we are in the northeast part of Georgia, so really it has little impact. It has had little impact on us, just some rain. Now, there's where I live now. We live here. There's no rain. I mean, it's, we've had a little bit here. And I, was, I work in Athens, and we had a pretty steady, slow rain there all day long. But that's it, really. Just a very gray, cloudy day with some rain. So thankful for that. So we are not really affected. So let's keep those folks in prayer who are being impacted by this. If you live in those areas, and if you're able to, let us know how you are. Let us know what's going on there, okay? We appreciate it. I did see where uh, the governor of Florida, Mr. DeSantis, said that he's not fooling around with looters, that if you his, if you loot, we will shoot. And that's how it should be. I mean, that's how it used to be back in the day. I mean, that would put a stop to it, you know? Got to be tough on this stuff. A TV, I, I read this story a couple days ago. In Chicago, a TV news crew were, they were robbed at gunpoint while, yes, reporting on robberies. Now, this was in the, where was this? The west side, the uh, yeah, west side of Chicago. And this crew was from the television state uh, network Univision, which is a Spanish uh, language station. Luckily, nobody was hurt. But I just thought it was a little, I, I just had to, I had to mention it, you know, reporting on robberies and they get robbed. I mean, you can't make it up, y'all. You can't make it up. I think we're quickly turning into third world here, especially in the large cities and probably beyond, most likely beyond. Um, and I'm Mitch McConnell freezing up again today, much like he did before. This time there was no tap on the arm restart, like they restarted like a computer like they did last time. Uh, that guy, and he, you know, and I won't go into the politics of it, that guy, he's something else. That That's a whole... That'd be a whole different video. But guys like him, McConnell, Feinstein, these people, I mean, they're so old and they're still there. I mean, what kind of ego, and at least this is the way I look at it. Maybe I'm totally off. Let me know. What kind of ego does it take to not retire while you are relatively healthy? I mean, they've been in this thing for years. And enjoy some life. Travel. Spend time with your family. I don't know. Even if you don't want to do that, travel, go do something. Sit on the porch. I don't know. Volunteer. What? I mean, these but they're not effective. They can't be effective at their jobs. They're like fixtures. I mean, this Feinstein lady, they rolled her in in a wheelchair not long ago. I mean, I, these poor people. I, I don't know if the family's more at fault. I don't know. I don't know what to think, but that's just my thoughts. I mean, enjoy life some, you know. 
Anyway, be ready. Now, I was listening to a JT Farag podcast, or, or I say podcast, uh, today while I was driving around uh, in my work. And uh, this was from a message from him from a couple of days ago. And he was just talking about being ready and, and, and talking about the rapture. And he believes it is close. We just don't know. We don't know the hour or the day. But uh, he was just talking about how really he was talking about, even though he didn't put it this way, he's really referring to the most important prep, which is your spiritual readiness. OK, um, the signs are there. And he's talking about how, you know, and I'm not going to get into uh, the, the the theology as far as pre-tribulation rapture, post, in the middle. I, don't, I believe there will be a rapture, but whether it's going to be pre-trib, after, I, I don't really know. I, I don't really have a firm leaning either way. I don't know if it's that important, to tell you the truth. Um Y'all can hash that out in the comments if you like. I know people have real strong opinions on that. Now, Farag believes in a pre-tribulation -tribu rapture. But uh, but he was just talking about the signs that we're seeing now. And and, and the evil, the, the especially in the last several years, the uh, with all the events going on on mul multiple levels about how there's just such a global effort at this. And it is satanic driven. Uh, there's a great, it's like there's a great deceiving going on and the deceived and, uh, and we are the elect and, and we must stand strong and we not, we, we, we can't let our hearts be troubled too much. And I'll go more into that, of course. But, uh, he was talking about several different things. He was talking about, you know, as far as signs and why he believes it's close. And I agree. And, and he's talking about, uh, the wars that are going on and that, that could get worse. You know, I think we're on the doorstep of World War III, to tell you the truth. Hopefully not, prayerfully not, uh, pray not. Uh, but the destruction, he talked a lot about the fires and he showed a map of all the fires that are that are active right now. And it is unreal, y'all. I mean, it's, it's, it's global. It's not just in California. It's not just in Canada. It's in Europe too. It's all over the place. And the fires and how destructive they are and this seems to be a year round thing now. And, and it is really something and how destructive it is. And not just that, the hurricanes, floods, tornadoes, you know, earthquakes, there's a lot going on, volcanoes, I, you know, seems like more than usual, you know. And, and, uh, and he was talking about how the dis this destruction seems to be uh, a little more than just natural, you know. Uh, if you know what I mean. And, and, and he talked, so we talked about that. He talked about the health crisis. That is, uh, that is not over. And, uh, and, and, and what goes along with that, if you know what I mean. And, uh, and then also this push for a global, and, and it's not just a few countries. It's not just a part of the world. It is worldwide and it is a push. And it seems like in every corner of our world now, the leadership of that particular area is diluted somehow. And it, and, it, and it seems all, almost all, not all places, but, uh, and there's this big push to, for a global, global government, go, global governance, economy, uh, a religion, uh, a currency, you name it. And, and it is, it is forming. And, uh, so that's another thing. And there just seems to be this push to, uh, I don't know, for there to be less of us. You know what I mean? Uh, and it is satanic driven, driven, a global effort for sure. A lot of uh, three letter organizations uh, involved in this on, on a lot of levels. And, uh, you know, 15 minute cities uh, and, and how we should be ready you know, and, and how all of that, especially with the destruction, the fires and all, and, you know, made me think, you know, what, what, what do you have to do or what, what do you have to do before you build back better? You know, what needs to happen before you build back better or reimagine something? Well, that's another phrase they love. And, uh, 
you have to be ready. We, you know, and, and is it coming? Is that time coming? Are we near it? You know, we have the doorstep of it at the beginning of those times, those days, very possibly. Can't say for sure. But it sure does seem like it, doesn't it? I mean, share your thoughts on that. But to be ready at any time and have that spiritual uh, spiritual preparedness and readiness that in the twinkling of an eye, it can, it can happen. And we don't want to be on the wrong side of that. We don't want to be left behind. Uh, we want to be be the uh, up there with Jesus, you know, and uh, and so that, you know, and he was asking the question, you know, what would you do if you knew that it's going to happen here soon? You know, how would you change your behavior or would you change anything? What would you do? You know, and um, and then he went into some scripture and all. And I like how he relates it to the scriptures, but I'll go into one here in a minute. But he was talking about how, you know, let's not be troubled. Let's be encouraged. And uh, as, as believers, uh, we should be encouraged. And, and you know, we, we will most likely have to endure some really, really tough times. If you think they're tough now, uh, I don't believe we've seen anything yet uh, on a lot of levels from the economy to possible war affecting us right here on our turf uh, to the increasing uh, loss of freedoms and, uh, you know, crime out of control. So we just, there's a lot of ways to prepare. You know, we talk about all the ways we're preparing, but spiritual has got to be number one. And uh, everything else is after that. Okay. Share your thoughts on that. I'm going to go into this passage because it is, to me, it's just one of the most encouraging. And uh, I believe it will resonate with you for sure. All right, I'm reading from John, book of John, chapter 14, first several verses, and the words of Jesus. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again. And will take you to myself that where, that where I am, you may be also. I mean, listen to that. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. For now on, you do know him and have seen him. How about that? I mean, that that first part too, I mean, in my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I prepare a place for you. And he's making it clear. I mean, he's like restating this and coming back to it. If you, And if there's any doubt, he's erasing any doubt here. You know, I will come again. And I will take you to myself that where I may be, you are also. Think about the impact of that. Share your thoughts. I hope that helps you. Maybe you just needed to hear that today. But be encouraged and let not your heart be troubled. Let's be safe out there. Let's keep preparing. God bless you. I will see you soon.